um, lots of lots of interviews on the docket right now? Yes, as a matter of fact. I've got another one in about 20 minutes, but we should be good. All right. Well, I promise not to keep you too long. I might even I might even uh, no, 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 give you okay. enough time to have a drink of water before you have to call the next person. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I guess the uh, one of the the main things that uh, we're we're talking to each other about today is the uh, the the new um, Do Live at Donington releases. Mm-hmm. And, That's right. Um, now. You're uh, listening back to that. The uh, the band just sounds so exciting and and so um, you know excited to be on stage and just absolutely solid. Do you have a lot of memories from that particular tour, or did listening to it bring a lot of stuff back for you? Well, I remember that. I remember that day. It was um, a very special day for me. It was my very first um, outdoor festival with Dio because we had done. Because uh, we had done some gigs headlining um, when I joined the band, we finished the Sacred Heart tour. Um, so we did about six months headlining at twenty thousand seat arenas, which was, you know, you know, big time for me. I I, I had played those arenas with Jafria, but we were opening up for Deep Purple and 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 um, Foreigner, not as a headliner. So as a headliner, this, the the stage was huge and and had all this room that you you're like, wow, you know. And then all of a sudden, there's 80,000 people. It looked like a sea of heads, and I was scared to death. <laughs> no doubt. So, so, uh, but it was cool because um, Richie Sambora, uh, Bon Jovi was was headlining, and we were co-headlining. He came over and was like, you know, kick ass for me, man, you know. And then Ronnie came over and grabbed my arm before I went on and said, just remember who you are. It's okay, because I guess they could tell I was nervous, uh, especially because I had a solo where. For some reason, like an idiot, I decided to do a solo where I would have the audience sing back what I would play. It worked out, but that's part of the reason why I was so nervous. I would I would play like a very simple guitar melody, point at the audience, and ask them to sing back, right. which they did. So at one point, you would hear like 80,000 voices singing back, and it was really great. So by that time, I finally you know got over my, my, my fear, but, <laughs> but that was part of the reason. <laughs> yeah, no doubt, no doubt. That would be, I guess that would be a little bit nerve-wracking, but uh, good, that, good that it worked out, like that everybody was listening. And singing. Yeah, it was it was nice. Yeah, because it, it, it could have gone bad, <laughs> 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 but it didn't. Thank God. <laughs> um, now the uh, um, listening back to the to the album again. Um, do you uh, um, do you have any other memories of of the tour? Um, like I, I read at one point there was a whole lot of equipment mishaps that happened right around that time as well. Um, there was uh, some uh, the truck had broken down at one point, and uh, a bunch of other cars yeah, well, piled we into to, the truck. Oh, that that was awful. That was awful. we were going to Italy. The the, the strange thing was is that um, I'm not very you know I don't really believe in omens and stuff like that, but this must have been that. We were in the limo coming from Ronnie's house on the way to the airport to go to Italy to do that tour. And there was these crystal glasses that we were all having drinks from. We were, you know, cheers, you know, off we go. And all of a sudden, Ronnie's glass shattered out of the middle of nowhere and cut me, Vinny, and Claude. And I tell you this to tell you another thing, that when that truck um, had the accident in Italy on the way to the gig, um, the only people whose equipment were destroyed was the three of us who got cut by the shattered glass. Wow. That's very, very weird. Yeah. And I remember that uh, they were telling us, um, because the time of day that it was, it was really foggy, and um, there was a truck that had jackknifed across the, um, across the, uh, the freeway as well. And so the roadies were trying to um, tell people you know, don't, you know, stop, stop. You know, they were trying to flag people down. But because they were long-haired, musician-looking people, they would, they were uh, ignoring them, but they would drive to their death. Oh, wow. Just drive right into the to the truck. And it was just horrible. It was horrible, yeah. That's awful. But, but that was, that was uh, yeah, one of the dark times, you know, but there was lots of, lots of other times that were better. Oh, yeah, <laughs> I'm sure. 
Um, any particularly maybe fond, fonder memories that you might have of, of that tour or, or even any of the others that you might want to share with us? Well, um, I remember um, that uh, it was it was uh, it was my like I said it was it was my first full length LP with Ronnie, and the thing that got me the most is um, see I was a my 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 father was a police officer, and my mother was a homemaker. So we you know we had very limited funds and and I had no um, connections to the music industry, and I was actually living in a car that wasn't even mine on the street, so I was basically homeless because they hated the fact that I wanted to be a guitar player. Right. And then at that time, I was listening to Rainbow and uh, Heaven and Hell, and because uh, <clears throat> that's when the, the, that uh, album came out with Ronnie. And uh, he, was, he was and is my favorite singer at the time. So five years later, I was headlining Madison Square Garden with my favorite singer playing music that we had written together side by side. And that was amazing because dreams come true and it, it just was, I'll never forget that. That's fantastic. That's, that's a very inspiring story for sure. And my dad, I remember I was in New York and I called him um, from, the, uh, from the tour bus phone back when they had those big gigantic <laughs> phones <you know>? <laughs> right <laughs> and uh, um i saw the the marquee and I said dad you know, we're headlining madison square garden and he goes uh he goes you know after all these years we kept telling you that you wouldn't be able to do it and i'll be damned if you didn't do it i'm proud of you and that was the first time he ever said anything like that to me because oh. he's a cop you know he's a yeah, yeah. you know on the vice squad he was in special forces so he was a, a man's man who never really showed emotion or feelings or anything like that you know and all of a sudden that was that was a big highlight too and then um he saved ronnie from getting busted backstage because ronnie smokes pot once in a while backstage right and uh at the you know, I, I grew up in san diego and uh, we were headlining the, the san diego sports arena and for some reason, the sports arena security guards were trying to make a, a, an effort to um, make arrests for if they smelled pot or anything like that. So they, they started to go backstage to bust Ronnie, and my dad was standing there. He pulled out his badge, and he goes, where do you think you guys are going? They go, nowhere, sir. Nice. <laughs> and, then, and then after that, Ronnie and my dad were buddies. 